But some people are very happy, you know, and I don't want to get too happy. We don't want to be too happy, but definitely some people are too pissed off right now. And I'm not talking about Yang supporters. Yang supporters should feel good. They should take heart. They were they were the 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 come from nowhere crew. They were the impossible dream. They were the underdogs who did well, who overperformed. Now nah, I'm talking about people who had these the establishment behind them. They had favorable news coverage. Hell, they blacked out Yang. I thought Yang was a black dude from Southeast DC. The way they treated Yang. Come on, man. No, I'm talking about people who were treated well. People that got love. People who who they gave coverage of and ignored all their flaws. Of course, I'm talking about Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren, she wasn't so happy. You know how I know? Because I can hear. Here she is. Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden collectively, if you added up their votes, they'd still be in fourth place. A surprising night for Elizabeth Warren in the in the not in the in the in the negative, I guess you say. Let's take a listen. Hello, New Hampshire. So the results are still coming in from across the state, but right now it is clear that Senator Sanders and Mayor Buttigieg had strong nights. And I also want to congratulate my friend and colleague, Amy Klobuchar, for showing just how wrong the pundits can be when they count a woman out. But since we are here tonight among family and friends, I also want us to be honest with ourselves as Democrats. We might be headed for another one of those long primary fights that lasts for months. We're two states in with 55 states and territories to go. We still have 98% of our delegates for our nomination up for grabs. And Americans in every part of the country are going to make their voices heard. That's right. The question for us Democrats is whether it will be a long, bitter rehash of the same old divides in our party or whether we can find another way. Senator Sanders and Mayor Buttigieg are both great people and either one of them would be a far better president than Donald Trump. I respect them both. But the fight between factions in our party has taken a sharp turn in recent weeks, with ads mocking other candidates and with supporters of some candidates shouting curses at other Democratic candidates. These harsh tactics might work if you are willing to burn down the rest of the party in order to be the last man standing. They might work if you don't worry about leaving our party and our politics worse off than how you found it. And they might work if you think only you have all the answers and only you are the solution to all our problems. But if we're going to beat Donald Trump in November, we are going to need huge turnout within our party. And to get that turnout, we will need a nominee that the broadest coalition of our party feels like they can get behind. afford to fall into factions. We can't afford to squander our collective power. We win when we come together. You know, the Reverend Jesse Jackson once said, it takes two wings to fly. And I think he's right. Our campaign is best positioned to beat Donald Trump in November because we can unite our party. Somebody get that lady an ice pack. Because she is really butthurt. Jesus Christ, Elizabeth Warren. You sound like somebody stole your bike. Notice how she said that uh, Sanders and Buttigieg had good nights. And her good friend, Amy Klobuchar, showed that a woman could do it. Or 
Something like that. <laughs> and they, they shouldn't count out a woman. You still in it, and so is Amy. And Kamala dropped out. I don't know what you're talking about. A lot of people dropped out. What well, definitely that you don't want to be is to be, uh, you know, to be on the outside looking in like if you were, I mean, you didn't get knocked out is what I'm saying. You know. You're still in it, Elizabeth. You're just not doing well. Maybe because you don't instill confidence, sort of like this speech you just gave. It's not a very confident speech. It's not a very inspiring speech. It's more of a speech of a person who has sour grapes and sour pickles. Okay, Tim Black. Give me a break, Tim Black. I just had a doggone rough night. And then I got you. Right in my bumper. Well, fiddly sticks and great poupon. You don't know how to treat a person. You don't treat me like the person, the senator, that I deserve. I'm going to go lay that dress out on the desk or on the bed, and I'm going to have a baseball bat in it, and I'm going to hit you in your milk dead head. God darn it, Tim Black. You're not a nice person. But I'm, a, I'm an honest person, though, Elizabeth Warren, and the bottom line is, as much as you talk about you want to be able to unite the party, it sounds like a bunch of talking points. Talking points, TPs, you know, like toilet paper. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do with your talking points. I want to use them to blow my nose. <laughs> but other than that, Elizabeth Warren, also, also, listen, listen. We just have to start using the, we need to be more civil talking points. It sounds like loser talk. When we start talking about, I can unite the party, it sounds like loser talk. You know, it may look like a gang of people to you, or a mob, or a brigade, but those are just people with shared interests who actually care about who becomes the nominee because they actually want their lives to be better. They're not an actual gang. The Yang gang wasn't a gang, and neither was the Ber neither are the Bernie Sanders supporters. We're not bros. We're just people who care about this election more than you do. And it's not our fault that Bernie Sanders is able to galvanize people from all walks of life in order to feel energized about his policies and his campaign and what he represents. That may look like a gang to you because it's a lot of people. You'd have a lot of people too, or a lot more people if you actually were able to galvanize people with a strong message. Instead of trying to make us back into your candidacy, maybe you should have a message that makes people want to run to your candidacy. And not because you're a woman, but because you and you alone are the person they think will change, will be the, be the essence of changing our politics. If you don't have that spirit, if you don't have that energy, then who the hell else is going to have it? I mean, if this is a harbinger to how you would be as a president, bad things happen and you come out here and you just poo-poo everyone and pout, that's not good. That's not inspirational. That's horrible. What else? Uh, if there's any consolation, we're not looking for a consolation prize. We're looking to win this thing. We want to run with somebody we think can actually beat Donald Trump. And the way you're talking, the way you're acting, I don't think you can do that. At the end of the day, if you were the best person to beat Donald Trump, guess what you'd be doing right now? Beating out the Democrats. Yeah, you got to beat the Democrats to get the chance to challenge Trump. You can't just say, I'm the best choice to beat Trump. You got to prove it by beating other people who also say they're the best person to beat Trump. So until you can win a state, I said it and I meant it. <laughs> My name is Tim Black. You're now tuned into the most watched black independent media news network in the country. We cover politics, we cover pop culture, we cover whatever matters in your world. If it goes down, I'm covering it. We do a show, live show, Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. Friday nights, we got what? A call-in show. Anybody can call in. Throughout the week, we put out little clips, short clips of important news. You don't want to miss it. Stay on top of your news. Go with a reliable source 
I'm there for you. TBTV, this is where it's at. Subscribe today and remember, don't you let nobody take your cornbread. Johnson.